Hello, I'm Rod Lawton, and in this video, I'm going to show you five quick fixes in DxO Photo Lab 7. You won't need them all, and sometimes you might want to add a different adjustment like high ISO noise reduction. But these are tools I use most often, and they're an opportunity to demonstrate an editing approach which I've always found really useful, and I call it worst things first. In other words, if you fix your photo's worst flaws as you see them, you'll figure out much more quickly whether it's a keeper or not. These adjustments consist broadly of exposure and dynamic range, color and white balance, perspective correction, spot and blemish removal, and sometimes local adjustments. You won't always do these things in that order. It depends on what needs fixing first. I'm going to use this approach on my photo of the 16th century manor house, with just some problems. I've got some distracting converging verticals going on with the building, thanks to my wide angle lens. The color rendering looks a little warm and the sky is as flat as anything, though I'm sure there was some texture in the clouds at the time. I've also got a couple of somewhat modern looking signs in front of the hedge, which aren't doing anything for the composition. And here's my finished image. It's drained up nicely, there's a lot more interest in the sky and the signs are gone. Best of all, it only took me five minutes to do. So let's start with the worst things first. In this case, it's the building's converging verticals, which are annoying me the most. There is an easy fix for this. Over in the right sidebar in the geometry tab, there's a perspective panel. The volume deformation and reshape panels, by the way, are only visible because I have DxO Viewpoint 4 installed. You don't get these with Photolab 7 as standard. Now, if I click the little blue switch for the perspective panel, the auto option in the panel fixes my converging verticals at a stroke. I don't have to do a thing. If the auto correction doesn't quite do the job, there are tools for manually correcting vertical and horizontal perspective just below. Now, although the perspective is corrected, I now have a different problem. I'm left with black wedges at the side of the photo. That's because the correction process inevitably creates these blank wedges where the sides of the photo are brought inwards. What we need to do is crop them out, but I don't have to do this manually. Instead, I can activate the crop panel just above and change the correction pop-up from manual to auto. Photolab will now automatically crop out those unwanted edges. The next thing is that I'm not quite sure about the color rendering, so I'll switch to the color tab and check the white balance panel. It's currently set to as shot, which is the camera's own white balance setting. I can try swapping this to daylight, which immediately becomes very cold, but then it was a cloudy day. Or I can try the cloudy setting, which looks a little more neutral. It turns out that there wasn't much to be done with the white balance setting for this photo, but it can make a big difference for other images such as landscapes, sunsets and interior shots. I'm really not happy about that flat sky though, and I have two options here. I can swap to the exposure panel and try Photolab's smart lighting panel, which does a really good job of evening up bright and dark areas in pictures. If I set the mode to slight, it does lighten up the foreground noticeably, and if I set it to medium, it tones down the sky a little too. Smart lighting is a very effective tool, but as here, it can make the overall contrast look a little muddy at medium to high settings. What I need is a little more local contrast to offset this, and the solution is right at hand. If I switch on the Clear View Plus panel a little lower down, it applies a 50% correction by default, which immediately makes this image look a lot stronger. So I fix the perspective, and the color and the overall exposure levels are much more how I wanted them. But what about those distracting signs by the hedge? They're not very big, but I think I'll get rid of them anyway. This is easier under magnification, and I can use the zoom drop down on the top toolbar to set the zoom level to 200%. Now I can switch to the retouch tool on the top toolbar, adjust the size of the brush with the on-screen adjustment panel, then brush over the signs. They are replaced with surrounding details, and it may take a couple of attempts to get a result you're happy with, but it's quick and effective and takes very little time. We're nearly there. Zooming back out and looking at the result, I do think it could do the little extra contrast and drama, and this means using local adjustments. Strictly speaking, I think local adjustments aren't necessarily part of any quick fix routine, but there are some images where they're obviously needed. So let's see what I can do with this one. 
I think what's going to make a difference here is a graduated filter mask for the top of the sky, with a reduction in the exposure, a clear view plus adjustment and a contrast adjustment too. This makes the composition a little top heavy, so I'll balance it up with another graduated filter mask dragged upwards from the base of the photo and an exposure reduction which darkens the foreground. This is much better. I've used my worst things first approach on this photo to start with its most obvious problems and work through all the other things that stop it from being a keeper. I'm pretty happy with the result. And because Photolab 7 is a non-destructive photo editor, I can easily change these adjustments if I come back later and decide I can improve on it. So that's it for this DxO Photolab quick fix video. I hope you found it useful. So thanks for watching and see you next time.